So let's start. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Fernando Alvarez. Okay, I'm area manager at Metricon uh, OPC. Uh, we basically, uh, we are dedicated to uh, industrial connectivity projects. Okay, so we have more than 25 years of experience uh, basically moving data from PLCs, DCS, RTUs. We are dedicated to data common connectivity, moving data from one place to the other. So typically, uh, Metricon offers solutions based in the in the OPC standard. So the the idea of this uh, webinar is to uh, to show you how to move industrial data uh, with security and based in the sec current security standards between the OT networks and the IT networks. Okay, so just for everyone to understand, the OT uh, is the name that we give to the all the, the operation technology layer. This is where we have. Uh, our machines, our PLCs, our DCS, our control systems. And as we all know, in this Industry 4.0 project, there is a requirement to also share data with IT applications. So let's, uh, during this webinar, we will present how we can do it in a secure way. And at the end, we will uh, also make a brief demo using one of the Metricon solutions we offer, that is the Metricon OPC Data Broker. Uh, that allows you to move data securely, all right? So at the end of the presentation, you will have uh, a demo. Uh, and yeah, just for you to get familiar also of how we can implement these kind of solutions in the in the industry, all right? So my colleague, Pedro Loreto, is here uh, also joining the, the meeting. He will, help, he will be helping with the chat, all right? If you have any questions during the presentation, just write them on the chat. He will try to answer the the. Um, all the questions during during the presentation and at the end also we'll have some five or ten minutes to to answer the questions that are remaining there all right so well let, let's start okay so this is just a, a brief uh, overview of the the automation pyramid all right this is what we can find in any industry uh, as i said we have the ot network and the it uh, network we have the where the ot is where we have all our sensors, devices, control systems, our PLC. This is where we have our production line, where we have our, our machines, all right? So historically, Metricon has been dedicated to connect uh, PLCs, uh, DCS, RTUs, and share that data, what is the typical uh, application, share data with the SCADA systems, all right? So uh, those kind of applications uh, have been living all the time in OT. but as the industry goes, uh, as the time pass, all the industrial connectivity projects have been changed a little bit. And now every time it's more frequent or more required to share data, not only across the OT network, but also share data uh, with IT applications, okay? Every time it's more common uh, to have projects where we need to share data with our ERP system, with our MES systems, and those are applications that they leave in IT networks, okay? So the idea of this webinar is just to show you how we can do it or how we are doing it in a, in a secure way uh, in the projects that we are currently executing, all right? So in the, in the different, uh, yeah, in the different requirements we have in this type of project, at the end, the goal is the digitalizations, all right? We hear a lot the marketing term that we need to achieve the uh, digital transformation of the company. Uh, and basically, with Industry 4.0 projects, we are trying to achieve that in all the different levels, all right? We have the shop floor, where we have our machines or devices. We have the operations, where we have our maintenance department, where we normally have the, the, the SCADA systems, okay? As I said before, in the previous projects that we were doing years ago, we were just focused in these two levels. But now, every time it's more common to share a relevant information from the OT network or from the industrial network with business. And also we have projects, of course, sharing data with the cloud, all right? So uh, as we need to share data with external applications that are not located in our secure network, it's very important, the security. Uh, but we hear very much this term of digitalizations and digital transformation. And we, we would like to explain first um, why, why we need to achieve this, all right? So why we need to uh, transform digitally our, our company, all right? So at the business level, uh, 
it's just a matter of reducing costs, right? Uh, if we achieve a digital transformation, you can we can reduce downtime, we can maximize our profits, and we can optimize the recourse uh, that we already have. So something very important to understand in the industry is that in order to uh, achieve the digital transformation, we don't have to get rid of the things we have. All right, we know that in OT we had PLCs that had have been working for 20, uh, 25 years. It's not uh, a matter of replacing the PLC. We can achieve a digital transformation just having legacy system, uh, but just picking the right tools then uh, to share the information, all right? Uh, another reason is uh, the agility, all right? So we need to make decisions faster in the industry. So years ago, it was impossible to think about a communication between the ERP system and the uh, PLC, right? But now we have many projects facing this where we can send directly a production order from the ERP system directly to the production line. And this, of course, makes that everything is fast because in the past it was just an email that someone from the business department sent to the production department. And those kind of communications take more time, of course, in, in case we can uh, have a direct communication between the, the different levels, uh, we can adapt production capacity to demand faster than if we use the, the old um, ways to do it, all right? And also a very important thing is the security, all right? Uh, of course, all the industrial automation um, projects, they are focused on avoid accidents, right? Uh, protect information, avoid stops in the production line. So basically we are looking for a digital transformation in our company because uh, all these reasons. Right. Okay, so how we do it? How we can achieve this digital transformation? So the answer to that is to uh, achieve the communication between OT and IT. All right. So we know that this has been uh, two different worlds uh, until today. All right. So some people come from the OT world, some people come from the IT world, but it's very, very difficult to find people with knowledge in both worlds, all right? So the way to achieve this digital transformation, the only way to do it is to convert this OT and IT and uh, establish a communication between each other, all right? So uh, let's explain first some of the difference, okay? So we have in OT, uh, I will mention some of the most important protocols. If you come from the OT world, uh, you are very familiar probably with Modbus, with OPC Classic, uh, with Profinit to communicate Siemens PLCs, Ethernet IP to communicate Allen Bradley PLC, and it could be some also some electrical protocols like IEC 101, 104, and so on, DMP3. All right, so uh, as I said, OT had been all the time like completely separated or isolated from IT, all right? Two different departments, two different worlds. Uh, Regarding the update speed of the yeah of how we upgrade the systems uh, in OT is uh, is very slow. Of course, if we have a legacy system like a DCS, like a, a PLC, uh, this PLC or this DCS works for 20, 30 years. All right, so everything in OT moves very slow uh, regarding to how often we upgrade the systems we have. All right, in the other side we have IT. IT, uh, this is where we have all the uh, software applications. Uh, some familiar protocols, if you work, uh, if you come from the IT world, HTTPS, uh, SN SNMP, MQTT, REST API, those are protocols from IT, all right? So IT, all the time, they have a big, very, very big focus in security, all right? All the protocols from IT, they are already think to cover security all right so if you if you compare ot and it protocols we can say in general terms that the it protocols are very focused on security and the ot protocols have deficiencies in those things why because for example modbus is a protocol that has more than 30 years it's a protocol that doesn't support authentication doesn't support, uh, it's not encrypted, all right? Because it was a protocol created just to share data between devices. In the moment this protocol was created, it was uh, impossible to think that you will share this data across internet, all right? So um, now that we have industry 4.0 projects on where we want to, in where we need to integrate 
legacy systems supporting these OT protocols, we need to see or we need to try to understand how we can cover the security, right? So the idea of the, these two different worlds is how we can do that these two different worlds, they work together, all right? So the answer to that, that question is through IoT gateways, okay? Uh, through the IoT gateways. Uh, for example, Meticon has an IoT gateway called Meticon OPC Data Broker. This is this software solution works as a connector between OT and IT. So it will make easier the communication with uh, between OT and IT. Basically, it's a solution that understands all the protocols that we can find in OT and makes the data available with in a secure way for IT applications. So in this way, using solutions like the Meticon Data Broker, we can communicate our shop floor, our uh, OT, everything, all the information we have in the OT, uh, we can communicate it with the applications we have at the business level, right? Where ERP systems, uh, MES systems, application that we might have in the cloud. So in the currently or in the future, we will have a A and I applications uh, like uh, databases in the cloud. So uh, through the IoT gateways, basically we can communicate in a secure way all the OT uh, data sources with the IT application. All right. Okay. So this is a this is a, an overview of how we can do it. All right. So uh, we will mention some of the things how we can do it in a secure, secure way. We, we will mention some of the some of the like. Uh, recommendations we can offer in order to achieve uh, industrial connectivity projects be like following the best security practices all right so typically is isolated networks right to to have uh, isolated networks with firewalls uh, between the networks okay uh, sometimes we have, we build a dm set uh, so the idea of the iot gateway the metric opc data broker it is, is a software that you can install in each level all right uh, where you see the green uh, checks uh, this is where we can you can install the Meticon OPC data broker and basically it's a software that allows you to move the data from those data sources into the uh, different levels until the applications who will consume this data they they will have that data available all right so when we uh, select an IoT gateway we we should look for five uh, important things that this IoT gate we should cover, right? So we will mention some of the things and then we will do a, a demo of the of the software, right? So uh, number one is third party connectivity, all right? So basically the, the Meticon data broker, he, he needs to get data from OT. So uh, this uh, application needs to cover the protocols that we have in OT, all right? So it needs to be able to connect with legacy systems, with PLCs, with all the data sources that we we will connect uh, and then we will share the data across uh, to IT. Um, another important point in an IoT gateway is the data context, okay? So we are now communicating OT with IT and we need to uh, make it easier to understand the information to the people of IT, all right? So uh, it happens to me many times that I, I go on site on companies and I have a meeting with the OT people and then I have another meeting with the IT people and they are two completely separate departments. They don't have communication with each other. They don't even know each other. So with the data context, uh, the people from OT uh, before sending the data to IT, they can give a context to the data. So it will be easier then to understand uh, where the data is coming from, where, what the data means and so on. So uh, the IoT gateway is very important to uh, that allows you to give context to, to this data, all right? In OPC UA, uh, this is something that is a functionality that is called data modeling, all right? This is a very new concept uh, in OPC UA, but uh, for sure this, this is something that will be implemented in the, in the future projects, all right? Uh, also, Number three is data source federation, all right? We will have in any industry, we'll, we, we won't have only one data source. We will have more than one. So this IoT gateway needs to uh, group all that information from all these different data sources, all right? So we will explain briefly each of these, uh, and then we will focus on the security, all right? We will focus on how we can do it in a secure way 
either if you need to share internally data to the IT networks or if we need to share data to the cloud. So in the security part, uh, we will make there the demo with the Metric on OPC data broker and one of the key functionality that the software has. All right. Uh, so yeah, based in the in the presentation we have below, basically we install the Metric on OPC data broker in each network level. All right. So the Metric on OPC data broker. Now we will focus in the data acquisition. All right. This part in OT. This uh, this is number one. The, he needs to be able to connect with uh, the data sources we have in OT. So we are in the yeah in the level one and level two of the pyramid, and basically how we can connect with those devices. The Metric on data brokers have something that we call adapters, right? The adapters are the different modules that support all the protocols that we have in OT, all right? So the Metric on OPC data broker can connect with OPC UA servers, can connect with modules slaves, and we are keep adding adapters to this Metric on OPC data broker, all right? So the idea of this is that we can standardize all the data acquisition it doesn't matter the protocol that we have below, we will have all the data available in the IoT gateway. We will have all the data available in this Metric on OPC data broker. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a way to you group all the data sources you have, doesn't matter the protocol, and then you will send that data to the, to the network on, on top uh, in a secure way, all right? This is how the industrial connectivity projects in Industry 4.0 uh, are being done right now. You try to group all the OT data because then in the future you might need to share it not only with one application, you might need to share it with more than one application. All right? Okay. Data context. This is what I was saying to make it easier, the information we send to, to IT. All right? So with the Metric on OPC data broker, we can create models of data. It supports data modeling. So this is basically just giving context to the data. So for the people who will read the data, it could be people from IT, it could be even people from another company. Basically, we can give uh, more information of each uh, data source that we have in, in OT. All right, so we can create models with the with the um, information, and this will make easier. And probably the people who will read the data in the SCADA or in the application that we have in, in IT, they have no idea about, about the production line. But if we can create models uh, where we have all the information structured and organized, uh, this will make easier then to browse that information and just to make it readable. All right. Okay, number three functionality is the data source federation, all right? So it could be that we start the project just reading data for a couple of data sources, but in the future, we need to read data for more. So with the IoT gateways, like the Metric on OPC data broker, you can group all the data sources in just one, all right? So for example, the data broker here in, in this example is reading data from a couple of OPC servers on left, uh, then there is another data broker in a different level reading data from one OPC UA server. And as the data broker has an OPC UA client, if we need to connect with an OPC classic server, we do it through the Metricon OPC tunneler. That is a, this is a software from Metricon that allows you to convert any OPC classic server into UA. So this is a good way also to connect your legacy systems. All right. So if you have OPC classic servers, because as we say in OT, we still find many, many applications supporting OPC Classic. Of course, this uh, in OT, everything moves slowly. Uh, well, we can uh, we don't need to get rid of that OPC Classic server. We can use a tool like the Tunneler, convert that OPC Classic server into OPC UA, and then we can uh, achieve the architectures that we were talking before. All right, and actually the, the demo we will do is very similar to this. We will connect to some legacy systems, to, to some OPC Classic server through the tunneler, and then we will move data in, in a secure way. Okay. All right, so let's talk about security, all right? Number four, uh, let's talk about the cyber security. So, so how we can move data secure uh, in a secure way, all right? So what are the typical things? Uh, isolated networks, as I we were seeing in the, in the pictures of the pyramid, uh, we isolate the networks, all right? So what happened typically in the past, like the OT was completely isolated from IT. As nowadays, we need to share data, 
we need to isolate the networks and put in firewalls in the middle between the, the networks, all right? Uh, we need to use protocols that support encryption and protocols that support authentication. So it's, uh, nowadays, having a project, for example, communicating over Modbus through internet is crazy because Modbus is a protocol that does not support encryption, does not support authentication. So if you move data across internet using Modbus, uh, well, it's a big risk because anyone can just interrupt that communication, connect to that Modbus master and make a mess in your network. So if we are moving data between the different networks, we need to use protocols that support encryption and protocols that support authentication. For example, the metric on OPC data broker does this data movement through OPC UA. All right, so OPC UA is the evolution of the OPC Classic and it's a protocol that support encryption and authentication. All right, so in the in the part when you connect one metric on OPC data broker in OT with a metric on OPC data broker in IT, you need to exchange digital certificates in order to uh, to gar guarantee that the, the other side of the, of the network has another metric on OPC data broker. You exchange certificates manually and if you want, you can add another level of security, which is an authentication. You can use a, a user and a password in order to make sure that the communication is secure. All right. Uh, what else? We uh, we need to we build DM sets. All right. As we saw in the in the pyramid, uh, normally it's very typical to isolate OT from OT through a DM set. This is perfectly valid. Probably you are already doing it. And one important functionality, and this is like one of the key features of the IoT gateways and the key feature of the demo that we will make later, is that uh, it's very important not to open incoming firewall. All right. So I was actually last week visiting some companies and I visited like six companies and three of them, they just told me that internally they cannot open any more ports in the OT networks. Like they are forbidden to open ports in the OT networks. All right, so we will share to you some functionalities or some ways we can share data from OT to IT without opening incoming ports, all right? Uh, so basically this functionality uh, or this, uh, yeah, this feature uh, is being done to something called OPC UA reverse connectivity. And this is something that the, uh, the metric OPC data broker supports. All right, so if you connect, this applies to any OPC UA communication. If you connect an OPC UA client with an OPC UA server, uh, you need to open one port in the firewall. All right, so the OPC UA server has one port. It communicates through one single port, and you need to open that inbound port in the firewall. Why? Because uh, in OPC UA, the OPC UA client initiates the connection with the OPC UA server. All right, so you need to tell the IT guy, okay, I need to open this port, all right? And they need to open the port in the firewall in order to, to work. What happens if you put a firewall and you are not allowed to open ports? There is no way to communicate through OPC UA, all right? So there is no way an OPC UA client that is probably in your IT network or uh, in the cloud, there is no way to connect with the OPC UA server. So the way to do it uh, and the functionality we will uh, get more focus in this webinar is through the reverse connect functionality, all right? To the OPC UA reverse connect, okay? With the OPC UA reverse connect, uh, we can close all the inbound ports, all right? So normally all the threats, all the security th threats are coming from the IT networks, all right? These are the, the networks that have more users, normally the network that are connected to internet, all right? So we can say like the most secure network is OT and the less secure network is IT, all right? So if we can implement this kind of solution like the OPC UA reverse connect, we can close all the inbound ports in the firewall and only open one outbound port. So using this functionality of data broker, you can uh, open just one port from the OPC UA server to the OPC UA client and close all the inbound ports in the firewall. So once the communication is established, then you will have a bidirectional communication. All right, so actually we'll make a demo. My colleague Pedro will help me with the, with the demo and we will make a demo where we will show you how we are reading data 
uh, from different from two data sources. We are publishing that data through OPC UA. Uh, we have a firewall between two computers. We have another computer in IT reading data, and we will see how we are communicating in a bi-directional way, either when all the inbound ports in the firewall are closed, all right? So how, how can we do that? Basically, in order to configure, configure this reverse connection functionality, and this is something that we can do with the Meticon OPC data broker, first, we need to uh, know from the, let's suppose that we are in OT, in the computer where we have the OPC UA server. First, we need to know, of course, the IP address of the computer we have in IT and the port number of the communication where the OPC UA client will be listening, all right? So in the firewall, we will have all the inbound ports closed, but we will open one port in the other direction from OT to IT, okay? So in the OPC UA client, we just need to know which is the, the port that we will use for the uh, listening. All right, so we will select one port uh, and we will tell the OPC UA client uh, which is the port we will use for listening. All right, so in this in this case, we will do the same. We will do a, a demo of a communication OPC UA to OPC UA uh, and we will close all the inbound ports. All right, so in this case, the OPC UA server is the one who starts the connection. All right, we were saying that by default in OPC UA, the client starts the connection. That's why you need to open a port but if the OPC UA server is able to open the connection, then once the channel, the secure channel is established, uh, then the communication is bidirectional if you want it. So uh, with this functionality, we can cover all the requirements that we were saying now the companies are being asked for. Like you can close all the inbound ports in OT, no inbound ports open, just one outbound port open to communicate. All right. And normally all the threats are coming from the IT networks. Okay. All right, and in the last point, uh, cloud communication. It could be that we can uh, share data uh, over IT to uh, IT applications over OPC UA, but also uh, we have many projects in Industry 4.0 that we need to share data with applications like Microsoft uh, Azure or Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services. So typically these applications in the cloud, they use MQTT. All right, so the Meticon OPC data broker is also compatible with MQTT, so you can publish data over MQTT. All the data that you have from uh, your uh, OT uh, data sources, you can publish that data over MQTT. All right, so let's focus on the on the demo. Uh, so basically, just to explain the, the architecture, we will have one computer that we can say like the one that is below that is in OT. Uh, in that computer, uh, we will have two data sources. One is some simulated data, and the other one is a OPC DA classic server. All right. So with this uh, demo, what we will do, sorry, what we will do is that we will connect these two data sources through a metric on OPC data broker. All right. We have all that set it up, and we will create a connection with a data broker we have in a, in IT in another computer. All right. So that communication is created. Basically, what we want to uh, share what we want to um, to prove is that we can share data across a firewall without opening ports. All right, so we will use a, a port, the port A001 for the reverse connection. So basically, the communication is started from the data broker in OT, and then once the connection is established, then the communication will be bidirectional, and we will prove that all the ports in the firewall are closed, all the incoming ports, all right? So basically we have two computers, the computers with the IP that appears there. And my colleague, Pedro, Pedro, do you want to share? Uh, we'll, we'll show you how, how to do it, all right? We will use the metric on OPC data broker for this, for this demo. Yes, of course. Uh, so, well, good morning. Hello, everyone. My name is Pedro Loreto. I am colleague of Fernando, okay? I work in the also in the sales department, and I will show you how how to make this kind of connection. Okay, so uh, let me show uh, share my screen. <clears throat> Wait a moment, please. Uh, okay. <clears throat>
Okay, perfect. So, well, this is my 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 personal computer, my laptop. Okay. So, well, basically, I have access to two virtual computers, as Fernando was was saying. So, right now, I will. Well, I have here like the the same uh, architecture that that Fernando showed to you. So, well, the idea is to we have these two computers. In the computer below, we have two data sources. We already configured the data broker to read data from these two OPC UA servers. Okay. So I will now, I'm going to enter to this computer. Okay. Uh, so, well, this is the computer where we have this IP address. The, well, the, the last number is 180. Okay. So uh, the, I have here. The way to get access to the matrix on data broker is using the OPC UA Explorer. You use like an OPC UA connection to configure the software matrix on OPC data broker. So uh, now I open the, the matrix OPC UA Explorer. This is just a free tool uh, to test OPC server. But in this case, this also this software allows us to configure the matrix on data broker. Okay. So I'm going to show you this is uh, everything that we can configure inside the data broker. Here you will find like all the functionalities that Fernando was explaining in the in the presentation, okay? But right now we are going to focus in the federator data source. Here we have like two data sources. We have the simulated data, okay? This is data that, that is living inside the data broker is just like, uh, well, we have like different kind of data, okay? And we have a second data sources that is the information that is coming from the tunneler. This tunneler is converting an OPC DA into an OPC UA. And here we have the information of the OPC UA connection to the tunneler. So right now we configure this data broker to connect to, uh, to these two uh, data sources that are OPC UA, okay? As you can see here, the simulated data, we don't have any st status because it's inside of the software. And for the other data source, we have the connection status is good. The, right now, the data broker is connected, and uh, is ready to share data that is coming from this second data source, okay? Uh, so what else? After we add the different data source, the next step is to create like the reverse connection, okay? So to do that, we need to create here like the client endpoint. So we need the IP address of the computer where we have the other data broker and the port. And, and of course, this uh, metric on data broker, we configure the OPC UA server of this data broker to deliver data using the port 8001, okay? As you can see here, we already make like the reverse the reverse connection to the client. Okay, uh, that this is like the only configuration that we need to make in the computer that we have in the OT network. Okay, uh, what else here in the OT computer? Uh, I also activate the the Windows firewall. As you can see here the window firewall is activated, okay? And, and for this particular demo, I create mm, a, a, an inbound rule to block all the incoming ports in this computer, okay? In, in, the, real, in the real projects, uh, probably we have like a physical firewall between the networks. But uh, just to show you how this works in, in this demo, we are using the, the firewall from, from Windows, okay? So as you can see here, this rule is blocking like all the ports using the protocol T, uh, TCP, okay? Uh, okay, so, well, this is the only, uh, well, this is uh, the computer in the OT network. I'm going to minimize this, and I will show you the other side, the computer in the in the IT network. So I'm going to minimize this virtual computer, okay? Uh, right now, we, we enter this computer, and I, and I show you these two data so sources and configure the reverse connection here in this data broker. 
this data broker is using the port 8001 to send the data to the other data broker using reverse connection, okay? So I have here a remote uh, connection, uh, well, a remote desktop connection, okay? So uh, I'm going to minimize everything. Sorry. Let's see, can you see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going, sorry, I, I lost the connection to the, wait a moment, please. Okay, sorry, I, I am back again. Okay, I'm back online, okay. So right now I make a, a remote desktop connection to the data broker that we have in our computer in the IT network, okay? So the IP address, uh, well, the, the last numbers are 100, 33 okay so i am going first i am going to show you that all the incoming ports in the other computer are closed the easiest way to show you that is to make sorry okay uh, is to make a telnet connection to the ip address of the data broker that we have in the ot network and using the port 8001. That is, that is the port that is using the OPC UA server from the other data broker to deliver the data. If we try to make a telnet to that, uh, to that OPC UA server, we can see here that we cannot connect because the firewall is, is blocking all the incoming connections, okay? So I am going to minimize this. I am going to open the OPC UA Explorer here in this computer. I already connect to the data broker using the UA Explorer in this computer. And here we need to go to Federator Data Source and create, a, I am I'm going to show you how is, conf, uh, yeah, how is configured this, this data source. We just need to define the listening TCP port. In this case, it's going to be the 8001. So right now, if an OPC UA server want to make a reverse connection to the client of this data broker, we'll be able to do it, okay? This connection, I already created this connection, is enabled, okay? And now, if I go here to, to, the, to, the, to the tags, you know, to the real-time tags that we can see with the UA Explorer. Sorry, I think that I already missed the connection to, to the computer. Uh, wait a moment. Well, right now we have we have we are here in this computer in the data broker that we have in this in this IP address. Okay, let me check. Wait a moment, please. Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to close the session and open it again. Uh, okay. So I cannot, Wait a moment. Okay, so if I go here to real time, I can see my, I am reading two tags from the data broker that we have below, okay? Uh, just to show you how this works, right now I have here the address space of the data broker in the IT network, okay? So if I start browsing this data broker, Okay, if I go to here to dispatch configuration, we will find the OT folder. This is the data source that we configure in this data broker. Okay, if I expand this OT folder, okay, I will, will find here below a folder called data. And inside, inside this folder called data, I will find the, right now I'm getting access to, getting access to the data broker in the in the OT network. 
And if I go the same to the folder dispatch configuration, I will find my two remote data sources, the simulated data from the data broker that I have below and the wrapper, that the wrapper is just the tunneler that is converting the OPC VA simulated data into an OPC UA. And if I expand, ex expand the wrapper here, yes, I expand the wrapper, I will find here data and we have like random data. I can, for example, add the open this folder. I'm going to, this is an square wave. And we have here our information. Okay. It's good with good quality. And we have the, the tag here. Okay. I can also add some other type of tags, for example, a, a Boolean. This is a random tag. It's a Boolean that is changing randomly. Okay. Um, and that's it. It's, it's changing from true to false. Okay. So what is the important thing here that we can ma maintain close all our incoming port? This is very important as Fernando was explaining. And, um, but when we establish the communication with, between the, between the data broker that we have below and the data broker that we have uh, on top, the com communication can be bidirectional. For example, this tag, this is like an empty tag and we can write a value in this tag and the, uh, and this value is going through our, the reverse connection and will appear in the data source. So for example, if, if I write right here, uh, number seven, okay? We wait some seconds, the number seven will appear here. And if I minimize this computer, okay? I am go again, to the data broker on the OT network. Here I have the, the classic OPC DA server, okay? So I am, for example, using the Explorer from Matricon, I am connected to the OPC simulation server, and we see here our number seven. There are the, the two tags that we are using the toner to convert to UA, then read to the data broker, and then move the data to the other data broker, okay? So, well, guys, this is basically the demo. Uh, I don't know, Fernando, if you want to, to continue. Yes, thank you very much, Pedro. Um, let me share my screen just to, to finish. Um, okay. Perfect. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. All right, so just summarizing, uh, well, thank you, Pedro, for, for this demo. Uh, well, basically, the, if, you, if we use a regular connection in OPC UA, there is no way to communicate or to make this communication work uh, if we don't open a port in the firewall. We were testing with the telnet operation that they, actually the port is closed, but either way, we had a bidirectional communication. So Pedro showed how we can read data and also write data. He wrote a, a value in one tag, and the wa value was written in the OPC DA classic server. So, all right. So, uh, probably depends on your sector, on your company. Probably right now, the people is not uh, pushing so hard about uh, the security and about not opening ports. But as I say, I met so many customers the, the last months where they are uh, already uh, forcing not to open ports. So this is something that is coming. Uh, and yeah, it's a functionality that is very interesting. And once you do, you use it, you see that it's very easy to, to configure it. And then you can, you can just share data across um, different networks without taking care. There is no open ports. And so you, you can say that you are covered because all the threats normally come from the IT network. So just to just to finish the presentation, all right? So the key points of the metric on PC data broker and the, I, the everything that should have an IoT gateway, uh, is, this is a tool to integrate OT and IT, all right? So it's, it's a, a product that allows you to integrate OT protocols and IT. I saw some question in the chat that 
Uh, also, you you can still use the data broker to communicate uh, OT applications. So this is something you can do as well. Uh, but uh, basically, this kind of IoT gateway, the idea is to share data and to integrate data from OT to IT. All right. So with the security, with these kind of solutions, with the encryption, with the authentication, with the digital certificate exchange, and with the reverse connection, we reduce the risk of cyber attacks. Uh, we standardize also the data movement because the good thing about this is that you create this OT data decision once and then if in the future in IT there is another application consuming data, it's just a matter of adding the, the MQTT, for example, publisher in order to do it or they just can just connect to the metric on data broker that is in IT and you don't need to change anything in OT. So you are standardizing all the data acquisition and you will put that data available for the applications on, uh, that are located in IT. And also allows you to modernize, all right? You will be ready for uh, for the new technologies, all right? So the typically ways to move data in Industry 4.0 projects in IT are usually MQTT and OPC UA. So with this kind of solution, you will have covered all the protocols that we are using to, to move data, okay? So here are some links to download the information um, that we were we were checking. Uh, how to you can download the Metric on OPC data broker. We can just give you a hand if you need to, some help with the configuration. You can just give you a help. Uh, here you have my email address. All right, f dot alvarez at metriconeurope dot com. And well, if you have any questions, you can write it in the in the chat. Um, and well, you know, otherwise, if you have a, an opportunity or if you want to test the solution, you can also write me a direct email uh, and we will be glad to, to help you. All right. So let's see. Well, I have a, one direct question in my chat. Again, uh, can we install Data Broker, Jules? Can we install data broker in Linux? Oh yes, I forgot to, to mention that. We can install this software, you can be installed on Windows or Linux. All right, so it, actually you can have a mix of architectures. You can have one data broker installed on Linux or in, I don't know, in OT, and then the data broker installed in IT is uh, installed on Windows. So yes, perfectly, you can, you can have the, the data broker installed also in Linux, all right? Something else? No. Okay. Oh, let's, let, there's another one. In summary, what tools may be equipment I need to show students in a demo context or in reducing cyber attacks? Well, if you, what is the name, Pedro, of the person? Hassan. Hassan, if you, uh, yeah, if you need to use demo tools, actually all the software that we don't we put in this demo, actually this will be recorded and send it to you. All the software we use in the demo is available in the website and you can download it for 30 days, all right? So the software runs for 30 days and actually every time you reboot the service, you have two hours more. So sometimes with the universities and educational centers, uh, they use just the software with the two hours of functionality and you can make actually this demo. You can download metric on OPC data broker. Uh, the data broker has simulated data as we saw in the in the demo. You can put two data brokers, one in each computer, and you can start playing uh, of how to connect each other, uh, what happens if you put a firewall, what happens if you block the port, uh, when you will lock the port, you will lose the connection, then you configure the reverse connectivity. So using the reverse connectivity, you will, of course, reduce the risk of cyber attacks because the, the threats are coming where they they look for open ports, all right? We do a cybersecurity training, and the first we do is to use, uh, to prove that a network is not, uh, uh, yeah, well configured. It's like to make a scan of opening ports in the firewall. And when you have opening ports in the firewall, it's easier to the for the yeah intrusers to to go and attack your your network. Okay, so you can you can download the information. Also, you can write us an email, and we can just advise you of what tools to to download depending on the demo you want to to build to to yeah to teach. Okay.
All right, how is the pricing model? It's, uh, asking Abdul, the, well, the, the pricing model, uh, basically we, we don't charge per uh, amount of tax. It's just very similar to the metric on OPC tunnel. You pay for a license you install in each machine, all right? If you need one data broker in OT, you pay for one license there. And uh, if you need another data broker in IT, another in DMZ, you pay for a license. So it's a license of metric on data broker per computer. And the licensing model is perpetual. It's not a subscription. It's not subscription based. It's perpetual license. It works for forever. Okay. Correct. Uh, perfect. So, well, if we don't have any more questions, this will be recorded and, and send it to you. And uh, and yeah, thank you very much for your time. And we hope to see you in a, in a future webinar. And feel free to, to send us any technical or commercial questions you might have about Metricon product. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Thank you, guys.